Okay, good evening everybody. Just a quick little check out. This is a thing that came from the auction. It's still kind of dirty. But, uh, you know, trash or treasure. This is a Conar Instruments National Radio Institute Model 211 voltmeter thing. So, anyway, your negative is a clip and your positive is the probe and it's got volts and ohms on it, AC voltage, positive and negative DC voltage, and it's got a range of up to 1200 volts on it. Um, the ranges are anywhere from 3 volts to 1200 volts and up to 1 mega ohm. So <clears throat> this one's kind of interesting because it runs on 120 volts. This is a wall plug unit which is kind of weird. You know we're used to all of these running on batteries. But we'll plug it in here and see what happens. If it explodes or what. So we plugged it in and we haven't had any fire or explosion. I'd kind of be curious to take this apart and see if there's something interesting inside. But uh, let's turn it on to let's try DC volts. Okay, so it's on on DC volts. Now I do have a zero function here and I can, this is kind of a dirty pot. It looks like it just started working, like it took a minute to warm up. Does this have a vacuum tube in it? Maybe it does. I think we should take the back off of this or the front of it off and see what's inside. Um, but I'm assuming I've got a, you know, obviously I've got a zero the meter here, probably based, it's using, probably using the line voltage as a reference, that's just a guess. Um, I'm not a million percent sure. So we're measuring DC volts and we are going to measure up a little 12 volt wall wart adapter thing. Um, unloaded this thing put, according to my daily meter, put out about 14.8 volts. So. We'll go to negative here, we'll put the probe in the positive, and let's see if we actually get a reading. We do. And our scale, we should be between 1 and 30. So wait a minute, no, we're at 30 at the peak, so that would be 3.0. So what are we reading here in DC volts? This is supposed to be a 12 volt adapter. And of course the negative just slipped off. Maybe this is loading it. Now this seems to have moved. My needle is not at zero anymore. Hmm. Now this is a 12 volt adapter. Let's put it on 12 and see. It should peak my meter, but this is this thing may load the circuit a lot, and if it's loading the circuit, it might drop this. I don't know. I'm just curious. To, I don't know if this even works worth the hoot. Okay, so we're supposed to be measuring up to 12 volts, and this is telling me 10 volts, right? Because it's supposed to go up to 12, and it's telling me 10. So this must load the circuit a bit. I know some analog meters do that. Hmm. Does this need my help? Does this need some surgery? I don't know. But we're back to zero again. When, you know, it seems to zero out okay. Let's look at ohms. I've got a um, resistor here. Let's see, this is up to 10 ohms, so let's see, ohm scale is there. That would be up to 10 times the value. The, the, um, <clears throat> let's go up to the 1K scale because I've got a 40, 
Wait a minute. Why would I be? I wouldn't need to be up to 40. This is a 40 some uh, ohm thing. So let's zero our ohms here. Oh, we have to. Because we've got infinite ohms now, right? So if we're going to measure ohms, we need to go and zero our ohms over here. Let's see. What am I looking at? Am I doing this wrong? There's zero ohms, right? Seems to be about right. Well, why is that? Let's see. This side is the zero for the needle, and this is the ohms adjustment. This one doesn't seem to be doing much. But maybe it's per range. Let's see what it does on a high range. Does it make any difference? It seems to make a little bit of a difference. Yeah, if I crank it all the way up, I do come off of zero a little bit. And there's no mirror. I can tell you what happens. Your camera runs out of footage, <laughs> memory. Okay, so we've got a 40, this is like a 47 ohm resistor, small value resistor. Now that's weird. Why is it when I took, why is it when I came off of here, now I'm showing, I should be showing infinite resistance. So maybe do I set this, well, do I set this to the maximum? Do I set this over to infinity? I mean, on ohms, when it's open circuit, I should see, you know, infinite, right? Infinite. And then when we close circuit, I should see... Maybe I need to calibrate this. Okay, that's approximately zero ohms. Hmm. Maybe I need to look some information up on this thing. Okay, how many ohms am I showing here? I am showing uh, good grief. This should be about 40 something ohms. And I'm getting crazy tail readings that don't make any sense. So measuring ohms with this isn't working very well at the moment. Hmm. That should be at 1 ohm, right on the 1 ohm scale, times 1. Hmm. And I should be getting somewhere with that, and I'm not. Because I should be over at, you know, when I short them, I should be at 0, which I am, but then I put across the resistor, and I'm not showing 40 some ohms, I'm showing. Not, not right, anyway. Hmm. I mean, I would think that would be at infinite, is what would make sense to me, to be at infinite. I mean, this should be showing 47 ohms, because that's what this is, right? Hmm. I think we need to do a little bit of look at this. Let's pull it up. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Well, perhaps the D battery in there that is older than the hills. I'll have to take that out and just look at it. I'm not sure how to get that out of there. I think you have to take the the screws off the front and slide it out the front. But we've got a couple of trim pots there up at the top. Um, let's see, it's not out of frame. There we go. We got a couple trim pots at the top that uh, I think you probably would calibrate this thing with. Um, and we do have some tubes in there. We got two tubes. What are these? This one's nice and still warm. It's been off for a little bit. Okay, that is tricky to read, but I think that is 04. If I remember there's some tubes like 02 and 04 that are used for voltage regulation, OC2, OC4, OC2. Well, we can look that up, you know. And here's another tube. This is made in Japan. And it says nothing other than made in Japan on it. Hmm. This, I don't see any other marking on this tube. 
and I don't see anything written on the base to tell me what kind of tubes those are. Goodness. Well, I suppose this warrants further investigation. Okay, so by removing the screws in the front, you can pull the guts out of the front. Uh, you do not require to take the back off. Um, the battery here is branded Kent. It is made in Japan. It's uh, guaranteed. And the battery is soldered on. It's soldered here and on the other side. I'm sure it's obviously toast. Um, nothing else in here looks like the kind of stuff that would really go south. We have resistors, many resistors, um, and some trim pots, which I'm sure we can probably, you know, clean if we need to. And we have a transformer. And um, perhaps our other potential bad news. Oops. Let's see if we can zoom in on that thing. I've heard these things can be real bad news, but I'm not a radio technician and I don't think this thing's drawing like crazy. That would be more than likely a rectifier of the selenium variety. Um, so, yeah, selenium rectifier. So it seems simple enough. I mean, there's rotary switches. Obviously, we have this rotary switch down here. Let's see if we can zoom in on that puppy. There we go. So, I mean, obviously that seems to be an okay shape. We can clean the, the wafers here, spray some cleaner in there, and work those a little bit. That does seem to work, generally. Then we have that on the other side. I don't think our tubes are bad, but you never know. And I don't have a tester that tests these strange tubes, but I wonder if we can find anything about this device on the interwebs. If we can... Ooh, I do see one thing. There is... that is an electrolytic capacitator right there. Filter cap. But, uh... It doesn't look like it feels like exploding right now, but what is it anyway? It is um, a German capacitor, West Germany it says on it, and what value does it say? Um, 150-201? Uh, I don't think that's exactly the value we're looking for. We're unplugged, right? I'm not going to... I might give myself a happy shot, but this is not a Barconic. And it just says 150 201 on it twice. 150 201. 150 is maybe the voltage, and 201 would probably be the capacitance. 201. 20 microfarad? 20 microfarad? 20. A nanofarad. I have to look up what 201 is because I know, like, on the smaller capacitors, these, you know, 201, 202. We'll look that up. Let me see if I can find any schematics or anything on this. I'll look for those and then, um, you know, we'll, we'll cut this video off at this point. I just thought this thing was interesting. Um, I've got four dollars in it right now, um, and I think it's kind of cool if we could restore it. I don't know that I would really <laughs> need it in the shop here, considering we have, for an analog meter, we've already got a Simpson 260. Um, but uh, just kind of a neat, neat old meter, and I do like that it, you know, works off the 120 volts. But uh, certainly right now it's not giving us anything in the realms of an, ac of an accurate reading. And it does have tubes. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, voltage regulation tubes, I, I think. That's what I think. Anyway, I'm going to go too long. Have a, great, have a great night, get some sleep, and 
you know, let me know if you want me to come back to this. I might just, you know, sell it as parts piece or, you know, something. But uh, I think it's cool, and it's certainly worth what I paid for it just for the interesting value. But it might not cost us more than a couple bucks to get this thing rolling again. And it would just be cool to say it's fixed and it works and it's sort of calibrated. <laughs> We're not sending this to a calibration place, but we'll compare it to our known good meters.